All right, welcome back with a completely new drilling session. Today we are doing ghee drilling. And here's the thing, the we're about three weeks away from the ghee Pan Ams, and uh, I'm actually getting a lot of people wanting to drill, which is it's kind of funny because like Ronnie and I joke about this, um, you know, back when we first started, started all of this, uh, no one wanted to drill. Everyone wants to live roll. Everyone wants to, you know, drill something two or three times and then they want to uh, go into live rolling or, or want to know what's next. So Monday we had four of us. We had Derek, Brandon, Austin, and myself. And uh, it's kind of neat. You know, I'm telling everyone to choose two or three things that they want to drill and and then we're gonna drill on that and and we're doing that every Monday like it's kind of it's kind of neat we set up like a little studio we you know improved our lighting improved our video quality we're improving our content and we're improving our our drilling so to me Mondays are one of my favorite days to actually feel somewhat accomplished and in, in improving myself and improving others and uh, it holds people a little bit more accountable that they're gonna get out what they put in essentially instead of just having a large group and I'm trying to cover everybody and help everybody at once and I'm only able to add you know a, a detail or two here or there I'm, I'm actually able to add many important details during these drilling sessions so Brandon wanted to work on kinda how to feed the arm out from close guard and start looking for other attacks so he goes for the reverse Kimura grip here and uh, and then he feeds it out to go for the Oma Palata. and uh, you know and then from the Oma Palata, he looks for for the uh, the triangle and then from the triangle he of course looks for the arm bar but he had I had to add that session in there because I, I thought it was funny but also he accidentally kicked Derek in the face and gave him a bloody nose and uh, from there we had to we had to take a moment break and uh, I told him I was going to use that, that little 10 second segment to add it to all my videos. Whether I do that or not, I'm not really sure. But as you can see, each one of us gets five minutes to drill. And uh, in that five minutes, we have to grow and build whatever it is that we want to build our flow up as. And that, that might be... Uh, adding resistance not adding resistance that might be you know in the middle of it just trying to get as many reps and as comfortable as possible or that might be um, really adding what it would be that your opponent's gonna counter so the, the communication is what I love the most about drilling and uh, I've noticed everybody you know Brandon and I feel like have one of the best connections right now as we drill but I like to see everybody adding the feedback in to their thoughts and their ideas. And uh, so that was Brandon's that, that was Brandon's session. Now we're going to mine. The, the thing that I really wanted to work on is I want to be a little bit better at counter wrestling, a little bit better at not being so afraid to be on my feet. And so I've been doing a lot of research on, you know, how to sprawl, how to hand fight. My hand fighting, I've done, you know, 10,000 hand fighting drills. And, and I, you know, I still have spent a lot of time on my feet, but it's still something that I'm not 100% confident in. And uh, so this year at Black Belt, my goal is to play more on my feet and not be so afraid. So for my drilling session, that's what I'm working on. Brandon does one double leg. Brandon does one single leg. And... Uh, the nice thing that I like as Brandon as a training partner is he's legit like he doesn't go crazy he could there's a couple times I even told him at the end of this that he probably really could have got the takedown like there were good shots and I couldn't continue to really you know stop the motion that I felt like I was gonna go to my butt but uh, but besides that he did really good at making it where I had to work you know and, and having low back issues like my L5S1 is completely herniated I did stem cell surgery on that and uh, it's a lot better but it's still one of those things that I've got to be really careful um, with how much hip rotation I use and how much I actually you know have to put my hips into something or how much I get inverted 
And those are just facts of life. You know, as, as I turned 39 this year and, and we progress in the sport, you have to figure out what your body's capable of and you have to communicate with it. Uh, I'm not young anymore. I can't just wing it, see what goes on and, and hope the next day that I'm functional. I have to make sure that uh, I keep myself safe. I think that's everybody. After 30 years old, if you're starting this sport and you're not communicating with yourself and you're not being aware of your body and you're not being aware of what you are capable of and not, not capable of, you're going to have constant injuries and, and every injury is going to put you off the map for one week, two weeks, two months, three months, you know, and, and that's that to me is a place in my life that I don't have a desire to go to. I want to be able to train at a, at a good level, but I want to be able to enjoy the progress and I want to enjoy the growth. So that's the whole purpose that I'm on right now this year is holding myself accountable to growth. Every day I'm trying to study like one new little technique that I can apply to my game, one new little way that I can Im improve myself or my students. And uh, from there, that's it. You know, like I'm going to do four, five, six good rounds, you know, some nights for a tournament, I'll do 10 or 20 rounds. But for the most part, I, I just try to average four to five rounds a night. I try to, to drill, I try to really get involved and make sure that my uh, technique is correct and that the, the angles, the pressure, all that stuff lines up. But uh, yeah, you know, it's, it's, I've, I've enjoyed the growth of figuring out how to still be a competitor and an instructor and still learn jiu-jitsu and keep up with all of it. So to me, the, the sprawling section uh, was one area that I really wanted to work on and be able to not be so afraid if people were shooting on me that it wouldn't work. So that was that part. And then uh, now we are up to Austin who uh, he's like the next little prodigy. <laughs> that we're trying to uh, uh, build up. He's, he's very involved in the gym right now. And to me, it gives hope to know that there is kids out there that are still, they have like a drive and a passion beyond just existing and doing video games or wasting life. I mean, he's texting me constantly about different techniques or different things that he was watching or wondering. And he's been really into the Barambolo lately. That's kind of all his segments have been is, is getting better at the Barambolo. So when we did the Gi, he, he was actually going to do something else, which you can't even do in the Gi, uh, a leg lock series. But it's funny because he decided, um, well, I, I basically said, you've been working on the Barambolos. We're going to actually do a Gi driller section with the Gi why are you not drilling barambolos like that is the the where it's at and uh, he's like okay and so that's that's the big thing is where he's at right now is is getting more confident in drilling the bolos and yeah i can't i can't lie like he's actually improved um a lot at this it, it's gonna be really cool to see i mean he's 14 years old he's he's still in junior high like i'm i'm curious to see where where he's at when he's 16, 17 years old, I'm, I'm hoping that maybe, you know, he's he's humble and he doesn't just completely destroy me. But uh, his, his technique's getting better by the day and he's putting a ton of work into uh, figuring out the sport. And uh, as long as he consistently keeps growing the way that he's growing, I don't see how he could fail. But uh, yeah, I mean, basically, I'm just trying to get him the very basic part of the Baron Bola right now learning how to use his hips, learning how to control my hips, um, learning how to make sure that he's dumping me to the side and, and going under me. At, at first, the big thing that he was struggling with was he was double rolling. So, you know, he would roll one one too many times instead of rolling under when he was going for the bolo. And, you know, I mean, it's, he's got a lot of room to, to improve, but, I mean, he's come so far in the last six months that... Uh, I know next year will be a really good year for him. I mean, he wants to do the kid's pants. I think he'll do great at the kid's pants. And, uh, you know, I, I feel like him and Sun Yoon have both really stepped up their technique this year. So so we have a lot of good things really going on in Effingham and Terre Haute. 
uh, and there's a lot of really a lot of really cool people coming up that are going to be able to uh, you know to jump into that spotlight and uh, and start creating a good path. So I want to say for the last segment we came up with Derek. Um, I want to say Derek. This is the last one, but uh, Derek is one of those guys that he's been with me since the beginning, and uh, you know life got a little bit crazy for him, and uh, he kind of had to to step away from being involved so much in the gym because he uh, you know I mean teachers right now are very overwhelmed with everything that they have to do and all their the things that they have to do as a teacher it gets a little bit overwhelming so between that and family he's finally like starting to kind of get back into the flow of uh, wanting to take his jiu-jitsu to the next level so I was like you know why don't you come to our Monday driller session and just see because I really do feel like his game's kind of been stagnant for a while it's been, even though he's tough, even though his grips are incredible, even though what he does do is very, very good, and he's very smart, I, I still think it's important that every three months you at least try to figure out how to add one more piece to your game and evolve it just a little bit more each each time. Because you can't you can't grow if you're not growing. I mean, that's that's just the as simple as it gets. So. He wants to kind of start figuring out the footlock game because that's one thing he's never worked on. Um, he's always been more of a guard player, more of a spider guard player, close guard player. So he does get stuck on top every once in a while and it's just not his big strength. So he was wanting to look at one other angle that could give him something if he, if he can't pass somebody's guard. So you know, setting up the toehold. First, looking for the toehold, and then we decided to evolve it um, to making sure that you go toehold knee bar. I wanted to make sure if you could tell right here, like if I can swim my foot in, I'll be able to clear my knee line. And as long as you don't have a way to stop my rotation from turning, once I clear my knee line, I'll be able to turn out and free myself from that position. So, the big thing that I'm trying to work with him right now is he needs to get his hips back, he's too far forward. Therefore, the knee line is almost out by the time he attacks the submission. And uh, so that's what I'm talking with him right here is I said that, you know, you need to sit on me because the more you sit on me, the more it's harder for me to chase your back and the, the more you can actually cover your legs behind my butt and fill that space. And, and by filling that space, I'm not going to be able to swim that leg in and therefore I'm not going to be able to start to escape my leg. And uh, so that's kind of what we're going over right now. So he, now he sits on me, he falls back, he looks for the toehold, the toehold's not working. What we build on next is we have to stop the toe rotation of him being able to turn, or of me being able to turn um, when he's going for the knee bars. So we, we look at feeding it, we look at stepping over, we look at the toeholds there, and uh, I don't think, I think at the end, I start working on how do I want to do the foot because even right here, I can start to turn and uh, to free my foot, even though he's going, even though like there's toe holds, knee bars here. Um, I want to say that I explained to him here in a second, like what he needs to do, if I remember correctly. Yeah, so we step with the, with the spot we can go either under if we want to go for the knee bar only um, and then I can step over that side and cover that hip so much tighter basically I just really want to make sure that I'm connected to the hip tight then when I'm looking at doing things I want to make sure that I can keep his leg as straight as possible the straighter I can keep his leg the the better it is as far as him not being able to chase my back or not being able to get anything out of me uh, and then it's, I want to figure out how to connect as tight as I can to his foot, right, with no space. And then I want to be able to curl, just like a rear naked choke, curl my whole body into the submission. But that gives you guys four drilling sessions, and I appreciate you guys for watching.